Okay, so firstly what we're going to do is look at the topology on this day mesh. So we can see the main areas that are going to animate on this. Obviously the, the torso is going to animate a little bit, the neck and the head area, but the legs are going to be the key area that's going to animate, especially if you want your data to move, which is crucial in animation to have a character, whether it's humanoid or creature, to give it the ability to move. Now currently we can see on the legs that we only have one edge cutting through the knee area, and the same on the back as well, where the legs are obviously going to bend backwards, but here they're going to bend forward. And in both cases, we only have one edge running through. Now, the problem with this is if you were going to try and bend this, if you rig the character and you're trying to bend it, what would happen is you would end up with distortion and collapsing of the joint. There's just not enough edges there to create a smooth bend in that knee area. So very quickly, what we can do here is we can go into Edit Poly, go up to your graphite modeling tools, go to Edit and then Swift Loop, and we can place a few edges along here. So I'm going to put about three just to start with, just to kind of show you. And we could do the same on the back as well. In fact, what I'll do, I'm going to leave the left side alone so we can have a look at a comparison towards the end. Okay, now that's all fine, but if you wanted to, you could go ahead and just adjust this because currently it's very straight and very flat. What I personally tend to do is on the kind of back area of the legs, just go with edge, is I'll bring them closer together. So just to kind of tighten those edges up. And on the front, you want to expand those, almost like a kneecap. So you see what I've done here? I'm just kind of expanding these out a little bit so that we have a kind of gradual change of angle. Now what that means is when it animates, we want pinching on the back of the front leg. We don't want that to be too spaced out. Whereas we want the front part of the leg to be stretched and to expand as the leg bends backwards. Okay, and that's going to help you and it's going to ensure that you get a pretty good bend in that joint. On the back is a very similar process except this time we know that the leg's going to bend in. So we need to repeat the process but we need to kind of push these edges or the verts up a little bit just to kind of tighten those up. I'm missing an edge here for some reason, so let's just fix that very quickly. There we go. And then with these, I'm just going to drag those in a little bit closer, like that. And at the back, I can select the three and just pull those away a little bit and possibly round that off slightly as well. So you can see what's happened there. As this flex is in, it's going to contract and pinch in the middle, which is what you want on a joint. You don't really want this kind of big, gradual change of angle because it's going to look very odd. If you look at your arm and you bend it in, you fold it up, there's a definite pinching on the inside of the joint, whereas the outside of the joint where the elbow is, there's expansion and obviously stretching of the skin. And that's what you want to try and mimic on your character model, especially on those joints. So that's all fine. Probably want to repeat the same process around here as well by placing a few edge loops. But again, that's going to be very similar indeed. So we're going to put a few swift loops in here especially because that's going to be the area that's going to bend. And we possibly want to do the same thing where we just start to collapse this together. Now, very quickly, I'm just going to select these and I'm just going to scale those down slightly, possibly rotate them, soften the angle a little bit more. Could even go about moving them up because again, when this whole leg bends backwards, then I want there to be kind of pinching on the back area just here. Whereas on the front area, I want there to be an expansion and a stretching of that part of the mesh. So you're just kind of ensuring that you're getting the best possible outcome in animation. So it's very quick. Go in there and clean that up a little bit more. Now on the neck, once again, you can already see that we, we've, it kind of demonstrates what I'm talking about where the inside of the joint, which is the top, is closer together and the bottom is wider. So you could effectively do exactly the same thing pop one in there, maybe pop one there as well. And then we can just soften that a little bit. So we can actually go in and select both the loops. Just scale those in very slightly. Okay, so very slightly kind of soften that angle and added some more geometry. So when it comes to animating that neck, we're gonna have a lot more to work with. It's gonna create a smoother transition from 
the torso to the head. Okay, so that brings this video and the course to an end. So as a quick recap, what we did was we first started out by looking at what topology is. Then we made comparisons between different types of topology using basic primitives. And then we looked at more complex examples of topology on models with very distinct purposes. And then moving on to module two, we were looking at 3D modeling topology fundamentals, ranging from how to deal with triangles and n-gons, using kites to weld together models with varying resolutions, how to handle poles or stars, and then finally, how to ensure good topology on models intended for animation. Thank you all for watching.